Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 72, I think, of the video podcast, Me and My Dog and Some Yarn. My name is Kim, also known as Black Horse on Ravelry, and you can follow me on Instagram as Black Horse Knitter. So welcome to the show. It has been a very, very long time since I spoke to you. I have missed you guys. I think about y'all all the time. I haven't knitted very much and I haven't been on Ravelry. Um, I've just been busy. Uh, my sister was in town for a while. I think you guys knew that from last time. And um, she'll be moving down here in probably September. She's having a house built. Um, my husband has decided he wants to move. Um, we've been talking about it for years and we decided we would wait till the kids both got out of college and got jobs and that happened a year ago. And so I was thinking we would probably wait one more year to move and all of a sudden my husband said, no, the housing prices are really good in our neighborhood and um, let's go ahead and move. So. I said, okay, and we started packing up things we didn't need, and um, I went through all kinds of um, dishes, and I don't know where I collected all this stuff, but uh, over the 15 years that we've been married, we have collected so much stuff, so I went through things and got rid of things, and I'm kind of still in the process of doing that, but... Oh my goodness. Um, so we got the house ready to show and um, enlist and um, our real estate agent sent a photographer out last Friday, two Fridays ago, um, to take pictures and he took pictures of the house and he did an amazing job. He made it look real bright and airy. He had me open up all the windows and turn the ceiling fans off. Uh, he said the ceiling fans would distort the, the picture. So I did all that, and um, we took pictures. They went up on Sunday night. Uh, the listing um, officially was active on Monday, and we had five showings on Monday. And by the end of Monday night, we had three offers on our home. So um, we ended up taking... Uh, well, the first offer we counter offered, and um, or they counter offered. I don't know how that works. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that right. This is the first time to sell and buy a house for me. So, because when I got married, Vince had this house. He had bought it like two years beforehand. So it's all exciting and new to me. But anyways, we took the counter offer of the first bid, and um, but. The week before that, we found a house that we really liked, and we put a contract on that. And so we close, I believe, on the 28th on this current house that we're selling, and then we close the 29th on the new house, or, yeah, the new house, and then um, we move on the 30th of July. So I have got a lot to do. I think this is probably going to be my last podcast um, in my old craft room. I love this room. Um, I will have a craft room at the new house, and um, I don't think it's going to be as big, and uh, it doesn't have the big window that this one does. Um, I love this one because it's got the laminate floors, and it's got the big... Um, window that looks out the front of the house and in my new craft room I'll have a little window that uh, is half the size and looks out the side of the house um, but I absolutely love the house um, we had planned to downsize and I kind of did in the fact that I've gotten rid of a lot of stuff that we didn't need um, but we got a house that has one extra bedroom we we're in a three bedroom now and we'll have a four bedroom when we move and the floor plan is just more open um, this is an older home and so all the bedrooms are on one side of the house on one hallway where the new house has the master bedroom downstairs and uh, three bedrooms upstairs we really planned on a one-story home because we are getting older and we didn't know that we wanted to climb stairs but uh, we wanted to move into the same neighborhood as my mom 
and the houses that were for sale were really tiny, like smaller than the house that we have now, with less storage space and tinier yard. So we actually found one in the same neighborhood as my mom, um, and it's two story. It's kind of like one and a half because it's not like a full floor upstairs. So, um, anyways, it's it's gonna be nice. It's got a big backyard, bigger than the one we have now. It's got the covered patio, which we have, um, but it's it's just more open, and um, I think we're gonna enjoy it. So. Once I get all set up in my new craft room, I will absolutely uh, film a podcast and, and maybe show you around the craft room. Um, so yeah, that's exciting. Um, really, that's the main thing that's kept me from podcasting. I mean, I have been, we've been boxing up all my cookbook collection. I got rid of probably a third of my cookbook collection. And I took it over to the church. They had a festival in April, so I got rid of a lot of cookbooks and hopefully raised some money for the church. And then um, my cookbooks are in storage. We have a storage um, unit, and um, just it's been crazy. Um, so yeah, I'm surprised that the house. Well, I'm not really surprised, but I am kind of surprised that it sold in one day. I figured. Um, what is wrong with my computer? There it goes. Um, I figured it would sell in a week or two, but not one day. So that's amazing. And I'm, I'm so glad and so blessed and relieved that it sold that fast. So everything's on track and I will keep you guys updated. Um, so let's get on with the podcast. Um, I want to announce some new members to the group. It's been a while, and we have um, quite a few new members. Uh, the first one is La Joya Girl, who is Nancy. So welcome to the group. We have Empty Knitster. I love that name. That's so creative. Um, that is Jude. So welcome to the group. We have uh, Shoba Raja, and I hope I said your name right. Uh, welcome to the group. Her name is Shoba. We have um, Little Angel 2113, and I don't know that person's name, but welcome to the group. We have uh, Jersey Girl Knits 2, and that is Pamela. Uh, we have Orange Maid, who is Helen. We have Katrina 50, and I don't have Katrina's name, but I assume it's Katrina. <laughs> Uh, then we have Skizzy, and I hope I said that right. Uh, that is Sharon. And we have one more. We have Marcy Darcy, who is Marissa. I love that name, Marissa. Um, so welcome to the group, everyone. Um, thank you for joining. I hope once I move that I will podcast more on a regular basis. Um, okay, so I've got... Uh, just a few works in progress because, like I said, I haven't I haven't been in the mood to knit, which is weird. But I think it's because every I've just been so busy, and then I've been trying to pack up things that were in the closet and trying to leave stuff that I might need out. But realistically, I'm not knitting that much. So today, after the podcast, I'm going to start packing up the remainder of my closet and then pulling things off the wall because. It's all got to go eventually, right? One month. Oh, my goodness. That, that's kind of scary. Anyways, um, so I'm going to show you works in progress, which are very few. I do have two finished projects, so I'll show you that. And then um, I've got prizes to give away for the uh, Knit Your Bits and Ladies Oh my goodness, I apologize. I meant to, I kept thinking about you guys and thinking, well, I'll just go ahead and contact them and give them their prize. But I just, every time I thought about it, I wasn't near the computer. And then when I got home, I got busy. So I, I apologize that you've had to wait two months for your prize, but um, it will go out this week. I have them right here, which I will show you 
in a minute what your prize is and um, then I'll get those packaged up and as soon as I get your your addresses I will get those in the mail this week to you and then I want to show you um, what I got at the Houston Fiber Festival yesterday. I went uh, yesterday with mom and we had a great time and I saw some of you and I missed some of you. Um, but I will show you the, the few goodies that I got and I really enjoyed it um, because it kind of put me back in the mood to knit, which I haven't really been in the mood to knit with all the chaos going on. So that was nice. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Oh, my shop. Um, I think I'm going to close my shop until after the move because I want to box everything up. And if I get an order, I don't want to have to try to figure out where it is. Um, I don't have that much in the shop anyway, so I think I'm going to put it on vacation mode. And hopefully after I move, I've got some gorgeous fabrics that I'm going to sew up. And hopefully I can get my shop up and running after the move and after I get settled. Um, so anyways, let's get started. Um, uh, I guess works in progress. Let's do that first. My nose, my allergies are driving me crazy. I don't know what's wrong. Okay. I am making a second pair of Rose City Rollers, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. And it's half finished. I've got one finished. I have to weave in the ends, of course, but um, I love them. This is my second pair. This is my second pair. And they are knit out of, is it Regia? 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 I don't know. Um... Here's the label, and I absolutely love these. Um, they come in different colors, and I've got the pink one, obviously. And this is my second one. I'm using my um, my carbons, uh, 1.5 US, and as you can see. Oh, I've got a terrible mess. I just threw these in really quick. Um, it's a free pattern, so I can tell you that uh, I'm on the heel flap of the, the sock. And it's just, I think it's like an eye of partridge. And it's a stockinette around the um, ankle. These are perfect for summer for here in Houston because it gets so hot that um, realistically, I wear flip-flops all summer long um, up through probably October when it starts getting a little cool, but I guess I put my flip-flops away like mid-November. Um, so I don't wear socks a lot in the summer, but of course, you know, running around the house in the evening, um, I'll put a pair of socks on or my slippers. So these are great for that, and um, so that's one project. Then, since I have absolutely no uh, concentration at all, I haven't worked on any shawls. I have two shawls going, but I haven't worked on them in two months. They were just sitting there, and I do want to. I do want to pull them out and work on them, but I just can't concentrate. I don't know what my problem is. Then I pulled this out, and this smells really good because I have a bar of soap uh, in the bat in the basket where I keep this, and it just smells so good. <laughs> Anyways, this is my Granny Square um, sock blanket, and it's just a scrappy sock blanket. Uh, then I'm making um, Amelia and. Um, Disa started doing this, and I saw Disa's uh, podcast where she was making one, and um, then 
Amelia had uh, posted on Instagram, and it really got me to thinking I wanted to start one, so I started this a while back, and I've done quite a bit on it lately. It's just gorgeous, and I love uh, the black that I've put between each square. I think it really makes the squares pop and show up. Um, the black is just Nitpick's Stroll, and I ordered two, or I think I ordered only two um, skeins of it, and I think I'm going to have enough because I'm into the second skein, but I haven't gotten into it much, and this is already pretty big. I don't think it's going to be a whole lot bigger. So that's uh, that's the other thing that I've been working on. I have been working on my mitered squares, but um, I don't know what I did with it. I packed up the room real quick because the lady who is purchasing the house wanted to show her uncle the house, and um, I had pulled some stuff out to work on, and then when she came, or when she was coming, I was like, ha, ah, got to put it away, so I threw everything in the closet, and I assume it's over there, but I didn't see it right off, and I thought, Shh, they've seen it before, I'll show it next time, so anyways, I have worked on that. Okay, so finished objects, I've got two. Sorry, I have got I have got things all scattered out because going to the fiber festival, I don't have a whole lot of room here. Here, hang on just a minute. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so the first finished project that I did was my Gail's um, Gail's art socks, and I did the Hermani's Everyday Sock. And this was a sock blank um, from Gail's Art that was a bunny. And they were for Easter. And I've got two of them. I put one on the blocker so you could see it better. Um, but I just love it. It's purple and teal. And my... I don't know why, but my camera keeps freezing. I hope this is filming okay. Um, but I absolutely love these so much. And so these are done. They can be packed up now. Yay. And then I finished Rosy Rollers. And I cannot remember the yarn name for this. I think it's Let Us Eat Cake. I think I bought it on the Hill Country Weaver, uh, the Hill Country Yarn Crawl last October with mom. And I think I got it. It was in San Antonio. I don't remember. Oh my goodness. Y'all can go check my project page, but I do have two of them. And I love these. I started them uh, Memorial Day and finished them pretty quick within a week or two weeks. I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, I got almost a whole sock done. I forgot. My husband, Vince, um, he's been going crazy trying to get the house done. Uh, we've been painting and things like that. And he actually pulled a muscle, like in his chest, but on his left side. And for days, he was complaining about it. And um, I told him, I was like, could it be your heart? He said, no, it's not my heart. I think it's something else. Well, he went on and went on complaining. And he said it was going up his, his neck and through his chest and down his arm. And I was like, okay, what goes down your arm? I think it could be your heart. You need to go to the emergency room. So I made him go to the emergency room. They kept him overnight. Uh, because they wanted to monitor him. They gave him, they, I don't know anything medical. Uh, they took his blood and they sampled his blood like every eight hours to see if his heart was giving off this enzyme that caused, that shows that he's having heart issues or he's having a heart attack. Um, I know Natalia, Natalia of, uh, of, oh my gosh, I can't even think. Um, Pinhook and needles. My brain. Oh my gosh. Uh, Natalia could tell you because um, I think she she's a nurse and I think she works in the cardiac because she does the uh, 
the, uh, I can't even think. <laughs> I'm sorry, Natalia. The uh, knit along. The, the, but I forgot what she calls it. Is it the red along? I don't know. Oh my goodness. Anyways, um, it wasn't as hard. Um, thank goodness. It wasn't as hard. Um, his mother passed away of a heart attack at 19. So we're very cautious of that. And he has had, um, a stress test several years ago and it was completely good and his EKG was good and everything. So he does have a, um, a stress test scheduled just as a precaution. And I think that's like next week. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I've been, I've been bugging him to go in and get that done anyways. And so maybe this is like a little blessing to get him in there. So anyways, I knit this whole, almost the whole sock, uh, the f whole first sock at the hospital while we were waiting in the ER and waiting to be moved to a room. So I knitted from like, I had just the toe done and I knitted all the way. No, I had, I had just the top done. And I knitted all the way almost to the toe, probably about right here. I had maybe an inch of this, and I knitted from here to here during the hospital on one day. So, although it was not fun to be worried and in the hospital with my husband, it was nice to have, get something accomplished. <laughs> Anyways, um, all right, so that is all of my finished objects. And I want to go ahead and give out the prizes. Um, so the Knit Your Bits was a knit along we did uh, to knit scarves for the military and to the for the veterans. And what I did was um, I asked you guys to join me and knit a scarf and mail it to me. And then I took them to Dallas Fort Worth for the Fiber Festival and I donated them on your behalf with your name on them. And um, I was originally going to draw a prize because I thought more people would join, but only three ladies joined. And so I thought, you know, with just three, I'm going to give a prize to everyone. So um, I shopped for you and um, I have your yarn. All of you re will receive a skein of yarn. And um, I just put your names on little tags like this. And... Um, I drew, I picked up a skein of yarn and drew a name, and so that's how I figure out who gets what, okay? So, um, the first one is uh, Stitched by Mimi. Stitched by Mimi, um, I think, sent me two scarves, and uh, her name is Sandy. She's from California, and Sandy, you have won uh, Western Sky Knits yarn. And um, I love Western Sky Knits. I have several skeins in my collection. And her color of yarn is just gorgeous. And uh, she is a Texas dyer. All of these are Texas dyers. Um, so you guys know. But this is the uh, Night Pool colorway. It's DK yarn. And there are 250 skeins. It would make great mittens or a hat, maybe something for a baby. It's really soft and it's pretty. It's got blue and brown. So, uh, stitched by Mimi, Sandy. Um, please, if you don't mind, send me your address and I will get this in the mail to you. If I don't hear from you in about a week, I will try to contact you, but if you could do me a favor and go ahead and send me your address um, to save me some time. Um, then the next person is Valeria. Valeria is from the Netherlands. And Valeria, you have a skein of Blue Bonnet Hill Alpaca Ranch. And the name of the yarn is called Treasures. And I love this. I have... I've knitted a um, Rika, or I don't know. I, I bought some of this uh, in October of last year in a pink, and I knitted a hat for my um, 
uh, TOK Christmas, Tiny All Knits Christmas um, swap partner. She wanted a, re is it Riki hat? R-I-K-K-I. And so I picked out some of this for her and I knitted it. And I also bought her a skein because it's from Texas. It's hand dyed in Navasota, Texas. And um, they sell this at, uh, is it WC Mercantile? I love that. I keep getting, I think I keep getting fuzzes, <laughs> fuzz from, from all the yarn. But this is made of um, baby alpaca. It's baby alpaca in silk and it's two ply. So I'm not sure what you're going to make out of this, but it's so, so soft, Valeria. So I think I have your address, but to save me some time from having to look that up, go ahead and email it to me if you don't mind. Message it to me in Ravelry. Uh, the third winner is uh, Kelly, and Kelly is from Kentucky, and her name is Cat Knits 12 Kelly, I picked out um, Knitty Grits for you. Knitty Grits is, uh, she's a dyer, and she's actually here in Houston, Texas, and this is called Time Bomb, and the color is, I hope you like neon. I love neon. I picked this up and just thought this is so cool. Um, I hope you like it because it's neon and it's beautiful. It's it's 75% uh, superwash merino, 25% nylon. It's 460 yards, and she doesn't name her colorways. It's just color 61513. Okay, so um, Kelly, send me your your address, and I will get this in the mail to you. I hope you like it. I think it's it's wild and fun. I think it would make great socks or maybe a really pretty shawl that you could wear with a solid black or gray in the winter. It's very pretty. So, um, ladies, send me your addresses through Ravelry, and I will get those packaged in out of my house and to you, and I hope you enjoy them. Okay, so the Houston Fiber Festival. Um, I went and picked up Mom, and uh, we went to the festival yesterday, and then um, we went to eat, and we came back, and we participated in the uh, mini swap, mini skein swap, and then we took a class by uh, Romy Hill on lace surgery, so that was so fun. So we shopped first, and when I first walked in the door, um, I went to uh, WC, WC Mercantile, and I found a llama. I thought, I am not going to buy this llama. I have several llamas in my collection, and I don't need a llama. I'm moving. I need to save my money for my new house because there's some things I want to get, and I don't need a llama. So I passed him up. But then, <laughs> before, the, before it was all over, I had to go back, and he was still there. So I got him. I just think he's a beautiful color. Isn't he cute? He is so cute. I love him. Um, he is made, or he's, the brand of name is Blue Bonnet Hills Alpaca, which is the same company that did the yarn for Valeria. They have an alpaca farm not too far from Navasota. I think it might be in Navasota. No, it's, I think it's in Brenham. I don't know. I don't know, but they have their yarns and little things like this at WC Mercantile, which is in Navasota. Um, but he's so cute. He had to come home with me. He was still there at the end of the thing, so he's mine. I have to keep him up high because Dottie likes to steal things like that. Also, at WC Mercantile, uh, when I first got there, I noticed they had these. I've been looking for these. I know they have them online, and I keep thinking, well, I'll order them and have them shipped, and then I keep thinking, well, I don't really need that. That's silly, and I go on my way, but when I saw them in person, I was like, okay, I have to get them. They open up. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> 
I just dropped it. Hang on. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm just a goof. Um, okay, so they open up. You can store stitch markers, um, your measuring tape, uh, scissors, whatever, and put it in your bag. And I don't know if you guys remember, but I made a bag out of um, Eiffel Towers and macaroons, and so I just had to have a macaroon case. And then, of course, I had to have the little one as well. And the little one can be used for stitch markers. I can't even open it. There it goes. The lid just pops off. They're made out of rubber. And so cute. So, so cute. I had to have them. Mom bought the little one, too. She didn't buy a big one, but she bought a little one. What else? Okay, so... Also, when I went back for Mr. Llama, I decided to purchase a skein of lace weight yarn. Um, it is deep purple. It's not showing up. I'm wearing a navy shirt, and I don't know. It's, it's bright purple, like a grape purple. Maybe that's better. It's great purple. Doorbell just rang. I don't know who that would be. Um, anyways, it's Blue blue Bonnet Hills Alpaca, which is the same as uh, Valeria's yarn. I've knit with it before. It's lovely yarn. Um, they, you probably could buy them from M, uh, MC Mercantile if you want to get online and check that out. Uh, their yarn is fabulous. So that will be a shawl. Then, um, round table yarns. I love this color. This is really a bright color um, to teal. I knitted a little, um, kind of like a little cardigan out of something this color, and it ended up too small, and so I gave it to my sister. So when I saw this, I was like, I have got to have this. I think it's probably going to be a shawl. It's fingering weight. It's um, the Camelot um, is the name of the yarn. It's 80% merino, 10% cashmere, and 5% uh, 5 nylon. I love it. I've never knit with round table yarns. This is a new yarn to me, so I'm excited about that. But I think it's going to be a shawl of some kind. Um, then I went to Savvy Skeins, Savvy Skeins, and I love her yarn. I've got one skein that I haven't knit up that is in a worsted weight, and it's gorgeous, and I know exactly the kind of hat I'm going to make. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to make out of this. These might be socks. Um... But the colorway is Lady Patriot, and I absolutely love, love, love this yarn. It's um, it's like a real, real light pink color, mauvey pink, but just barely tinge of it. It's mostly when you look at it, it almost looks white until you get real close, and then it, you can tell it's um real light mauve color but it's got the specks of blue and red fabulous it is a uh, 400 it's on her Comal sock base and I love the names of her bases because it all has to do with Texas Comal is a river uh, near San Antonio the Comal River so this is Com Comal sock and it's 400 yards uh, fingering weight yarn it's 80 percent superwash 20 percent nylon I love it. this was the first skein that I bought I kind of walked through a little bit and then when I saw this I was like ah, she's got only three skeins I got to get it so I did and I went to um, 
I went to Diana Contour. I think that's it. Yes, Diana Contour. I love her bags. I bought one of her um, owl. She calls them yarn owls. Um, it's just like a little bag. I bought one, as you can see, right huh, there. <laughs> Last time. And that's got a Stephen Shaw, Stephen West Shaw in there right now that I just don't have the brain power to work on. But I bought another one. And this is... Uh, like Alice in Wonderland, I think, fabric. So cute. Cute, cute, cute. Um, it has the handle. And she has the top opens up. So you can put a cake of yarn in here. And then you can snap it back like this. And then your yarn comes out the center. And you can knit with it. And it's big enough right now for me to put the project down in there on the top. So I love, love, love this. It's very, very cute. She, she has, she has excellent um, bags. They are very, very well made. And what I really wanted to get at the Fiber Festival, and what I went for, is a bag like this. Um, I don't know, she doesn't uh, have a specific name for this style. Yeah, she does. Serena bag. It's the Serena bag. It's the smaller of the bags shaped like this, um, but it's huge. It's got the strap. It's big enough for projects, obviously. And as you can see, it's very well made inside. It's got two pockets on each side, and they're... Uh, divided pockets. One side is divided, one is just a big pocket. And then um, coordinating fabric. It's just, she does an excellent, excellent job. And they snap. And the shape, I don't know if this was um, this was her plan, but the shape of the front allows the yarn to come out through here. So you could have it snapped and sitting on the floor next to you or on a table as you knit and pull your yarn out. It's just so cute. And I love the little kitties with the antlers. So cute. I fell in love with this one the minute I walked up. And it was so busy in there. You could barely get into her booth. So when I got in front of this one, I grabbed it and held on to it while I looked around. But I definitely ended up with the one I grabbed first. So that was fun. That was definitely the one vendor that I definitely wanted to see. So that worked out great. Oh, while I was there, I bought a needle keeper, which matches the one that I bought last time. So that is neat. They didn't have one to match the kitty or the Alice in Wonderland, so I'll have to watch for that. She does have a website, so perhaps I might order a, a needle keeper to match those. Oh, um, I picked up a mini skein at uh, Savvy Skeins. Same. And this one was really cute. That's for my blanket. And then I got a needle keeper. And the needle keeper was purchased from... Um, hang on, because there's two with a similar name. There's Yarnivore, but I think that's in San Antonio. Yarnarama. Yarnarama is the one that I purchased this from. Really sweet lady. She has a store in, um, it's halfway between Houston and Austin. I needed more coffee, guys. I, need, I needed more coffee this morning. What is the name of that town? I can't think of it right now. Page. Page, Texas. <sighs> My brain, y'all. It's not good. Um, I've seen these. They're for, uh, they're for uh, circular needles. And you put your needles through the rubbery part. Here's a little picture on the back so you can see. And I've heard nothing 
but good things about this. So I am anxious to try that. And what else? Oh, I I finally bought a skein of Spun Right Round. Um, this was in the, oh gosh, what booth was this in? Let me think. It was, um, my brain hurts. It's um, a yarn shop down, oh, Park Avenue Yarns, Park Avenue Yarns. They're down, I think, in Lake City. I've been there maybe once or twice, but it's really kind of far from my house, so I almost never go. But it's a lovely store, and... A lovely assortment of yarns and the lady who owns it is really really sweet um, anyways it is spun right round and uh, the name of this one is holy crow and it's uh, grays with rust and brown and it's gorgeous this is gonna be a shawl for sure um, I'm not sure what kind yet what pattern I will use but it will be a shawl Okay, so when I took the um, Rami Hill class, uh, it was a really interesting class, and she seems like a really sweet lady and a great teacher. Um, when I was taking the class, though, um, they came in and gave a gift certificate away, and I won the gift certificate. So during the break, I ran out there real quick because the class was supposed to end at 5, and the market ended at five. So during my potty break, <laughs> I ran over there and uh, shopped this vendor. It was called, um, I can't even remember the name, Fiber, I will look it up and I will put it in the show notes because I feel bad that I cannot remember. Um, it was a husband and wife who had a little booth and they are, I asked them where they were from. They said they were outside of Fredericksburg, Texas and I love Fredericksburg. My husband and I went to San Antonio for our, uh, honeymoon and we actually went to Fredericksburg, um, on one of the days and it was, it was amazing. I love that little town. So anything up in that area is great. Um, but I picked out a beautiful skein of yarn, and um, this is fingering weight yarn, and the brand name is Persimmon Tree Farms. They had um, a whole bunch of different brands. I don't think, I don't know if this is actually their brand or just a brand they carry in their shop. Um, but it's... Uh, it doesn't say what weight it is. It's mohair and wool, and I think it's probably uh, it's probably DK or worsted. I'm leaning towards worsted, but I don't know. So, anyways, that was very sweet. I'm I was really excited to win uh, win some yarn, but the class was amazing. So I. I purchased the class for mom and I because that was her Mother's Day gift, and so she finally got to enjoy her Mother's Day gift. Well, I say enjoy, but I think it like it was so tedious that it probably stressed her out more than enjoying it. But she did learn a lot of techniques, some really neat techniques, and I think we will both go home and practice because I think I think to do this kind of thing really takes quiet and um, concentration and you know when you're sitting in a class section is uh, class it's hard because there's all kinds of people talking and everybody's asking questions and you know it's good because you hear questions that you might not have thought to ask but when you're working on something so tedious it's kind of you need, well, for me, I need total quietness. I need everybody to be quiet. I need to go into a room all by myself and just, you know. So, anyways, I didn't finish because um, Mom and I had to leave early because my husband um, 
we had a, fun a church function last night. My husband is in the Knights of Columbus, and he had a, a thing to go to, so we did that. We had to leave early, but um, basically, she teaches you how to rip out your knitting and um, how to fix your mistake, which can be very good when you're working on a a big lace project. Say you've got this big lace shawl and you look down later and you see that you've made a one little mistake. And of course, if it's not very noticeable, I would say, oh, don't just don't fix it. But when you're working on lace, that sometimes that can be very noticeable. Like if you've got a pattern that is forming a leaf shape and your leaf just one of your leaves don't <laughs> doesn't look right. I mean, you almost have to fix that. And do you really want to rip out, you know, 20, 30 rows of knitting, especially if you're like towards the end and you've got three to 400 stitches on your needle? No, you don't. So this can come in very handy. And one of the things that, um, well, you know, she talked about um, using a lifeline and um, stitch markers and things like that to help prevent mistakes. But then she also showed us how to fix it. And, um, this is great. I'm going to use this information, I'm sure, at some point because I make a lot of mistakes. But the one little tip that she did tell us that I thought was just pure genius. Um, okay, so when you put in a lifeline and you've got stitch markers, you can't very well put in the stitch markers unless they're locking stitch markers because eventually you're going to pull that... Well, I guess you could. You could pull the yarn out and still, you could put the stitch markers. Yeah, I guess you could, but she gave an amazing, amazing tip. She said that she uses a plastic straw and she cuts little tiny stitch markers out of plastic straw. And then that way, if she needs to cut them out of her knitting, she can. This one's pink. I don't know if you can see it. It's just a really, really tiny sliver of cutting a plastic straw. And then she slips these onto her lifeline. And if she has to use that lifeline and go pick up those stitches, she's already got um, little stitch markers there. So I thought that was a really good tip. I like that. I'm definitely going to do that. Um, you know, the, the real stitch markers are fun. Uh, they brighten up your knitting and they make you all happy. But these you can actually cut and throw away if you have to, basically. So, very neat idea. Very uh, knowledgeable lady. And she makes amazing shawls. And in fact, I asked for her book for Christmas. I had it on my Amazon wish list. And um, I can't remember if it was my husband our Tori who purchased that book for me for Christmas but it's amazing and um, now I'm really in the mood to pull that book out and start a shawl but it's gonna have to be later after all the chaos is over and the move is you know that I'm settled so anyways <clears throat> I'm sorry anyways uh, I guess that's it um, I enjoyed talking to you guys. Um, you can keep up with me on Instagram. That's really the only social social media that I'm on lately. Um, I just haven't had a whole lot of time on Ravelry. Um, I used to love to get on there and read the boards and add patterns to my cute, but I just haven't. I haven't done that. I don't have a whole lot of time. And when I want to have a, a few minutes, but you know, standing in line at the post office or um, things like that, I only have a very short amount of time. So I usually pop on Instagram and see what's going on. So if you want to keep up with me on Instagram, you can. Um, if you send me a private message on Ravelry, just know that it might take me several days to reply to you. But and I'm really behind on podcasts. I haven't got to watch any podcasts lately. So I've got a lot of catching up to do once I get settled. Um, so anyways, thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around. 
and um, I guess I will see you in August. Y'all have a wonderful summer, and I will talk to you guys soon. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.